Thanks for joining me for another Lessons in Logic video. I'm Andy with Equizoe Ministries. For this video, I'm going to talk about the burden of proof. Now, the burden of proof is quite simple. Anytime you're engaged in any kind of a debate situation, and the more formal, the more this applies, but um, when one person makes a claim, the other person on the other side of the debate uh, is not bound to prove or disprove the claim. So basically what it, it boils down to is the person making the claim has to prove the claim. It's their burden. And we often see in debates, and it's not necessarily uh, logically fallacious, but it is kind of a dirty trick where uh, one side will throw out a ton of claims and then the other side is then uh, finds themselves at a loss for time because they got to step through each one of those claims one by one and refute them and the it, it probably helps in the debate to some degree to try to refute claims I mean that's just, that's generally how debates work is that you wanna you wanna make your own claims and you wanna refute your opponents claims but um, the burden of proof really really does apply or or, or lie with the person making the claim. So, um, for for one side to rely on the possible fact that the, or maybe it's an actual fact that this, the other person can't disprove the claim, would also would also commit an appeal to ignorance fallacy, and that's uh, that's another video, and we'll do that uh, another time. But um, the the burden of proof in this one definitely as I'm as I'm saying lies with the person making the claim. So um, a an example from a few years back was the strange fire uh, discussion. There was a strange fire conference put on by John MacArthur and Grace Church in California, and but the whole discussion that came out of that uh, that that conference was continuationism versus cessationism and, and do the gifts of the spirit continue or have they ceased? So a continuationist, somebody who holds to the gifts of the spirit from uh, the book of Acts for the most part, from the New Testament, that, that would say things like prophecy and healing and whatnot continue to uh, operate in our current time, um, they're the ones making the claim. They, they're, they're the ones claiming that well, there are, you know, we have these these gifts that are that are still there, and uh, so they're the ones that have the burden of proof to to show, you know, where does it say in Scripture that we would continue to have these gifts? Scriptures place the burden uh, also on the claiming the one claiming to speak for God, and the continuationist uh, definitely being, you know, prophecy being one of those gifts, they are claiming to speak for God, so they, you know, not only logically but scripturally have the burden of proof. Thanks for joining me for another quick video in Lessons in Logic, and this was The Burden of Proof. And you can check out the entire series at equizoi.com slash lessons dash and dash logic as you see on the screen. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Lessons in Logic.